My ex 31 male wants the dog back after cheating on me and getting his boss pregnant. Get ready, grab some popcorn, get comfortable because I am giving you details for better understanding. My ex 30 male, let's call him Kelvin, and I 24 female were together for a few months already and decided to adopt a beautiful pit bull puppy. I was already living with Kelvin for this and thought it was a great idea since he worked a lot and the puppy would keep me company. Now this next is some background but I promise it's relevant to my choice and hopefully give you a better idea of where I'm coming from. I met Kelvin in my hometown where I used to live with my parents, fell in love with him and we moved together to his city, Mexico City, where I could keep studying and could get a better paying job. I didn't know the city or anyone there, so I had nothing else to do but study online since this was during the pandemic. I tried getting a job but was hard with my schedule. A couple of weeks after we moved, he and I came up with the idea to adopt a puppy to keep me company. We found one at FB Marketplace, paid for his vaccinations and fees, and got him home, a small studio apartment. Kelvin took the role of provider since I'm still in med school and couldn't work a full-time job without falling behind or leaving the puppy alone for way too much time. We both decided we would take on the responsibility of working and paying bills. I, in return, would take care of the apartment, clean, cook meals, do laundry, take care of the dog, basic household chores. I was also happy with it, so it was a mutual agreement. My parents would periodically send me a small amount of money for me since I was still in school, but were not happy with my decision of moving with the guy I barely knew and they never met. I wish I listened, but I was too in love and stubborn to see the flaws in my decision. Fast forward months later, things were not so great. We loved each other very much, but were so different. We fought a lot. Kelvin was incredibly jealous and possessive. Even though I spent all of my time in the apartment, only went out to do errands, supermarket, and dog park. Almost to the point of becoming violent. I couldn't stop regretting my choice of being in a foreign city all alone with no one I know near. and didn't want to go back to my parents and listen to them tell me they were right. Fragile ego. I kept through it because I loved him, like really loved him even after all his flaws. Now I know it was barely love, but that has taken me a lot of work in therapy and medication. A few months later, my school in my hometown announces we were going back to normal activities and I should be there by fall. He's mad we have to go, but agrees to move there. Just while I finish school, my last semester, we make all the arrangements and even fly the dog, Rocky, six months old, to my hometown. My parents offer us to stay in a house they own and have for rent in the outskirts of town, a 20 to 25 minutes drive from downtown. Rent free, they were just happy to have me back in town and see me in a loving relationship. Kelvin wasn't happy at all, kept complaining about the house. It was indeed a bit old and needed repairs and how my parents are only just now supporting us since I'm back in their town where they wanted me. I tell them it's a great opportunity since we're only paying for the services like water, gas, and internet. And the money we would otherwise be spending on rent could go towards repairs, paint, new doors and knobs, renovating, etc. And once I'm done with school, we could rent it and keep the money as extra income. This was with my parents' permission, of course. I even tell him we didn't have to stay there. We could look for something else. He eventually agrees to stay there only while we find something better. I even go and get a job at my old part-time job. I'm friends with the manager, so she was flexible with the hours since she knew I was still in school because I wanted to contribute a bit more to our home, still doing laundry, cooking, etc. Not even a month later, I'm sensing something off. He's super irritable, more than usual, and anything and everything would annoy him. I decided to go through his phone while he showered. I know, I know, so bad, but something was bugging me. And that was the first and only time I did it, determined to find answers, and I did. The last messages were to this person, let's call her Leah, 34 female, which I knew only by name since she was his old boss back in Mexico City and he would occasionally mention her in job-related conversations. She's from another country, let's say from where Netflix is the crown takes place, and significantly older than me. She comes from a well-accommodated family and has her own business in her country and also in Mexico City. Leah and Kelvin have been friends for some time and she offered him a great paying job in her business. This happened while I was living with Kelvin too, though I never had a second thought about them. I kept scrolling through their conversations, getting curious since they call each other babe, which was odd. Then some sexting, songs he sent me as well, texting as he would text me, and then I find out she's pregnant. There are pictures and everything, some explicit ones, some of her and her bump. I'm speechless. I couldn't process what I had just seen. And then it hits me like a thousand bricks. I am the side piece, basically. She was already six months pregnant. Kelvin and I were together for almost a year. I got cheated on early into our relationship. My world starts to shatter into a million pieces. All our plans, all our love, gone. I'm in tears, dumbfounded, and couldn't believe it. Of course I confront him. He is ashamed and in tears as well. He starts telling me how he doesn't love her, that she threatened to not let him see the baby if he wasn't with her in a relationship. That's why he kept messaging her and sexting and basically having another relationship. I could just not find it reason enough not to talk to me the minute he found out. 
how he could have lied for months, kissed me and sleep in the same bed as me when he knew something so important. Lied to my face and keep making plans with me as if his life wasn't about to change forever. Apology after apology, I kick him out. I knew he was low on money and struggling, but I didn't care and told him to go back to Mexico City to collect his things and go be with this child that he had nothing else to do here. He reluctantly did it. He also wanted to take the dog right then and there back to Mexico City, but couldn't afford it. I told him to get his shit together in Mexico City and then come back for the dog if he wanted to. I was attached to Rocky, but I still loved Kelvin so very much and knew he loved Rocky as much as I. So I was willing to give him up since I too struggled with money and had to go back to my parents' house. Couldn't keep the dog either. Kelvin flies to Mexico City and then to Leah's country where she will be having the child. Never coming for Rocky, which I understand. I devastated and feeling like a fool, moved back to my parents' house, ashamed and now with a 30 kilogram, 66 pound pit bull to look after. My parents are angels and let me keep him. With my part-time job, I could continue taking care of Rocky. They helped me with vet visits, food if needed, and sitting if necessary. I am eternally grateful for them and can now appreciate everything they have ever done for me and my siblings, and now Rocky. Two weeks after Kelvin leaves, I am not feeling well. I find out I'm pregnant. I thought the world was laughing at me as if life was pulling me the cruelest joke. I was pregnant too. Two women pregnant in the world at the same time from the same guy. Sigh. By this moment, I am beyond angry, with myself mostly and with this man who cheated on me, who decided to hurt me deliberately and then go be with the person he cheated with and start a new family. I was around two months in when I found out, mostly because I was feeling like shit. I thought it was just depression, the duel of the messy breakup, but heck no. The morning, all day sickness was too much. Headaches, mood swings, the crying, it was awful and not normal at all. Took a quick test and the next day a blood test. Positive, well shit. Almost immediately I call him, cursing him and his stupid penis. We used protection and I was on hormonal contraceptives. He feels awful because he loves me and he said he would support any decision I wanted, as if I had a choice. From the moment I saw the plus on the stick, I knew what I would be doing. I knew what I should be doing. I was having an abortion. Living with my parents, no school finished, no career, no income and no stable partner, I could just not do it and would not do that to that baby. I've always dreamed of something different, bringing a baby into the world, into a loving and caring family, and having the resources to give him or her the best life possible. It was not time yet. It was just not my time, and not something I wanted. I can now talk about it, but it still brings tears to my eyes. Even though it was the right choice for me, for my future, and for that future baby I will be having someday under the right circumstances. I don't regret it, but no one has an abortion just because they want to. I made my peace with it and can now see that was the right call for me. Kelvin supported my choice, not before trying to convince me to have it. And by the support, I mean he said okay to my decision and sent me money for the ultrasound, like $50 maybe. I need it before the abortion process. Keep in mind, I'm from Mexico, where abortion is still illegal in most states. So you have to be super careful with whom and where you go to. In other words, expensive, but not impossible. Still the hardest thing I've been through. I had my friend's support, but never told my parents. Couldn't bring myself to it since I knew they would have convinced me to keep it and they would have supported me all the way. But it was just not right for me, not under those circumstances. I get through it by myself, just a couple of closest friends knew, pay for the abortion ultrasounds I needed. Him another continent playing house with Leah. For them, the baby is a reality, and it's happening to them, not for me. That was hard as shit. Took me almost a year to get over it, to even write about it. Therapy and medication, friend support, keeping me busy with Rocky in school. I'm finished, DA, about to start my internship. Things start looking up, I'm still with my parents and still have their full support. Even with having a 60 pound dog, they help me look after when I'm at the hospital. Having Rocky really helped me through the process. He's the sweetest, most loyal dog ever. Always by my side, sleeping in my bed, being the house favorite. So I push myself out of bed every morning and give him a walk to keep me active in the evenings and cheerful on dog school on weekends because being depressed in bed all day was not good for a puppy or for me. I have Rocky to thank for getting me through all this shit last year. He still does. Every hike, every walk we take, every trip to Petco to get his food, every single moment, he reminds me of how strong I've been, of what I'm capable of overcoming, and who are the ones worth loving. A few weeks ago, Kelvin contacted me. We went no contact a few months after my abortion. I kept an Instagram account of Rocky to upload pictures because Kelvin asked for some of the first weeks he was away, and I didn't want to contact him directly, so I told him to follow that page if he was interested in knowing about Rocky. Of course, I didn't follow him back or DM him. Just posted pics of Rocky. He's got a few followers now, mostly friends of mine who love Rocky. So Kelvin contacted me after months of not knowing of each other. I keep posting pics now and then, but not as regularly as I used to the first months Kevin left. 
I genuinely thought he would come back for Rocky maybe a week or two after I kicked him out. He didn't. I got too invested in Rocky, so I assumed the dog was mine. Now since I take care of him as well as the first months he was a puppy, and now is one year old. Kelvin contacted me a few weeks ago. He asked for the dog back. He said he wanted to keep the dog, or at least rotate him six months each. He wanted me to castrate Rocky, then put him in a cage, fly him in cargo, since he's a pit bull he cannot fly in cabin, for 16 hours, all alone, in an airplane going to another continent. He also wanted me to pay for it. He made it sound like it was the least I could do, since he supported me for months. Let me remind you that this was an agreement we both made, and we both thought was the best choice for both of us. But he made it sound like I took advantage of him and I owe him. I'm 100,000% keeping the dog. He is my world. I've supported Rocky all this time, taking care of him and doing everything necessary for Rocky to have a balanced, healthy lifestyle. Dog school, vet visits, quality food, walks, hikes, everything. I needed somewhere to vent to and possibly get insights on this. AITA for keeping the dog, even though my ex bought it, and even after he cheated and got someone else pregnant, also, should I consider sharing custody of the dog? Would that be necessary? I'm a bit scared he could come and take my dog away from me or not give it back at all. Let me know what you think and if you think I'm the a-hole or what you would do in my position. Top comment, you don't owe Kelvin shit. Plus, I don't think Rocky would enjoy being carted around. If he wants a dog so badly, there are usually plenty available for adoption. Second top comment, nope, nope, nope. You owe him nothing, nothing at all. Don't agree to give him back. Does he have proof of having purchased the dog? Is the dog registered to him? If he comes to claim the dog, make small folder, make him pay all the bills, dog school, vet costs, grooming costs, food, everything you paid until now. Third top comment. You and Kelvin are using the dog to stay connected. Why else are you allowing Kelvin to view your social media posts? Cut Kelvin off completely. Block your phone and social media. If you need to change your number, start a file with every receipt for food, vet, and licensing. This way, if he tries to go the legal route, you will have all the proof who is taking care of the dog. Do not acknowledge any contact Kelvin may attempt.